Good morning. Welcome to God Talk. It's Sunday, still before noon. And I'm, I'm glad you could be here with me. I know that it's a beautiful day outside here on the West Coast after uh, lots of cold and rain and people are outdoors. But eventually this talk will get around. And I um, want to talk today about do people have two souls, pre-Christian, Native American, and Jewish beliefs revealed? Well, you say, well, why are you talking about this? Why aren't you talking about politics? Well, the answer is because I am. I'm talking about what I want to talk about, what I'm thinking about, what people, someone asked me a question. And we're living in a time when the gay movement or the homosexual movement or the heterosexual movement or the LGBTQ plus crowd is ever, everywhere and ever present. And some embrace this, some hate it. Some say it's a perversion, some say it's an expression of their true selves. And so people have asked me, Michael, what do you think? What's this all about? What's going on? So I dare take on this topic. It's a dangerous topic, I realize, in a very highly political, politically charged time. <clears throat> but I prayed on this before going on the air. And I asked God, I said, Baruch Hashem, what should I do? And God answered me. God said, go, Michael, talk about it. You of all people can help people with this subject, with this crisis, with these thoughts. Help them, help the world deal with this. So that's my God talk today. That's where I'm going to go. If it's not your cup of tea, maybe I'll see you another Sunday. If it is your cup of tea, I'm sure you'll stay with me the entire time. Everything's reversed in the camera. I can't see which side this is on. So it's a beautiful day. I should be outside inhaling the sea air. But I'm inhaling God's air today. And I'm going to exhale God's air today. So first, when I say to you, do people have two souls? Pre-Christian, Native American, Jewish beliefs revealed. Where do I begin? Let me begin with the Jewish beliefs, the traditional Jewish beliefs. I wrote to two very important thinkers who I communicate with, who you probably don't know, maybe except through my show, but they're some of the smartest, just saying some of the greatest minds of our generation. But no one ever heard of them. All you heard about is which rapper touched his genitals on stage or which thug showed his muscles while doing talk radio showed you his muscles and his tattoos and told you he was a great man. You have no you have no hope. We don't know which way to turn. Who is the great man? What's the difference who a great man is? I am merely the messenger. I am not the message. Many people confuse themselves with the message. They get trapped in that whole concept if they're in the media. I'm beautiful, I'm great, I'm smart. We all go in and out of that. But never forget, if you're in the media, you are only the messenger, not the message. The day you start thinking you're the message, you'll start to think you're the Messiah. The day you think you're the Messiah, you'll think you're God. The day you think you're God, you'll get a job on CNN. So um, <clears throat> where shall I begin? Shall I begin with the pre-Christian, the Native American, the Jewish belief system on two souls? What is a two? What do you mean by two souls? Don't we have one soul? And when we, we die, our bodies die, the soul goes to, to heaven or goes to the other place. Oh my goodness, the microphone's pretty far away. Can you hear me? How how good are we? How how good is the sound right now? Really good, I hope. I'm sure it's good. So I did a screenshot today, not of the messenger's face, but of a painting I did a number of years ago. I don't even know if this represents two spirits, but it certainly represents two, two forces within. And it was done on November 29th, 2014 by Michael Savage. It was called Two Men. Hmm, interesting, Two Men. And if I look at a lot of my primitive drawings, here's Yellow Man, Red Man, talking to each other. I don't know why I drew these things. I have a lot of things with dualities in them. Here is 
a sleeping baby, a pure baby. Does the baby have two souls? Or is the baby born with one pure soul and then the baby is distorted by life? I don't know. I'm going to ask some questions before I try to give you some answers. I'm looking through some of these just because I'm looking through them. This doesn't apply. Here we go. Here we go again. Look at the duality in all of my, look at the duality in all of my childish primitive paintings. Look, you'd say devil and angel. Okay, that's a simplistic view. I'm looking within myself first, okay? Let's see what else. This is just one folder I pulled out. Here's another one. Again, September 15, 2015, the two faces within, the two talking heads. Okay, so it's a question that I've dealt with inside. Here is a, a cheerful one of a man in a vineyard. Again, but look at these little heads down here talking to each other, duels, dualities. Look, look. See, I'm playing my own Dr. Freud here for you. There is the same drawing. I'm doing psychoanalysis on the air. Here is a man holding sausages and wine. He's a happy man. But look at the duality again. <laughs> look, look at this. If you were doing a psychological analysis, look, two, the two bottles, look. You know, it's very interesting sometimes the revelations that we get through our little games that we play on, in life. So I know I'm not alone in asking this question after all. I'm one of uh, billions of people. So let me begin by start reading some letters to you. Uh, how did this start? I sent this to a rabbi, Shaus Taub, T-A-U-B, brilliant man, who is the rabbi seen on the video praying over my grandfather's grave I had not known of prior to that. I was so moved by his prayers that I broke into tears and I had to sit in a chair. I had never been to my grandfather's grave in New York. He was there and he made a prayer and lit a candle and all of that. And I was so moved, I started to shake. And since then, he and I have started a correspondence. He's a brilliant man. And I wrote him this this morning. I said, good morning, Rabbi Taub. The Native American people have long acknowledged and respected those born with two souls. They call them by various names, two soul, twin spirit, twin soul. What is the Jewish teaching about biological men who sometimes or all the time feel like a female, some dressing like a female, or about females, biological females, who sometimes or all the time feel like a male? I have read Leviticus, so I know the traditional teachings. But this being far more common than most believe is there a revised or current teaching that might bring less confusion, less self-hate to a person, man or woman, who lives with these feelings. And here is what the rabbi answered me. He says, please don't put questions about politics up. If you want that, you can go to Mark Levin. Or you can go listen to Cumulus Radio. Why are you bothering me with these questions about Janet Yeltsin and the Fed? Could you move into another realm with me? For, I'm going to stop in a minute. Do you want me to stop? Or do you want me to just do what the idiots can do? The, the, you talk about two spirits. You talk about people, people with a one-string guitar. That's all I can talk about. Biden, Trump, Biden, Trump, Democrat, Republican. Aren't you tired of that shit yet? See, I got thrown off. I'm very easily distracted by stupidity which is why I don't like it being around live people. People distract my brain. I have a Stradivarius between my ears. And when someone's playing a banjo with one string, my ears can't take it. I start to rattle. That's why I don't go around a lot of people. I can't take it. I said I'm only the messenger. I'm not, I, I, I'm not God. I'm not a disciple of God. I'm a messenger. You want me to go on with the duality? Then tell me you want me to go on talking about the two the two souls, or I won't do it. I'll just I'll stop altogether. Why am I doing this on a sunny day? Yes or no? Okay, please go on. And if we get the trolls, I will 
they are deleted by my staff later. They never heard from again. So I asked the rabbi about this question. Now, this is a powerful question for people who identify as LGBTQ or people in families with such people. And it's it's all over the news now. We just had a trans day that Biden celebrated, didn't we? On Easter Sunday, spitting in the face of, of traditional Christians. What's he going to celebrate on Rosh Hashanah? Ramadan? So to the traditional Jews, he answers this way. He said to me, there's actually a fascinating letter that the head Rebbe, that's Rebbe Schneerson, wrote in English to a man from Berkeley of all places who said he wanted to become a woman. The Rebbe's response, in my opinion, is an incredible model of how to combine compassion with honesty. The Rebbe is unequivocal that trying to change genders will only cause misery to the person himself. I need to find a facsimile of the letter and send it to you as an attachment I'm away from my office, blah, blah, blah. So he then says, in short, my understanding of this highly charged and complicated concept is that we acknowledge that the human psyche is complex and that all of us possess masculine and feminine aspects to our personalities. That should come as a surprise to no one who is being honest. However, that is a separate issue entirely from one's gender, which is determined by biology and anatomy. In other words, we can acknowledge that there are men who have very strong feminine energy, yet they are still men at the end of the day. There's so much more to say. I will get you that letter. And he sent me the letter, and frankly, his answer was better than the head rabbi's letter. I, I sent it to him. He said, You're brilliant what you sent me. So that was his answer. And then I looked into something I've known for a very long time, which is the Native American view. Back in 1972, I published my first my first um, major book, Earth Medicine, Earth Food. I had spent years, just say, delving into Native American healing. And although it was putatively only about plants and how they're used in medicine, this book is still in print, by the way, 50, 60 years later. I can't even get the copyright back. It's still being printed. It's a, it's a masterpiece. I remember working on this book late at night. I just remember it. I, I, and my professor called me and he said to me, Michael, go home. You have a family. I had a young baby at the time. And I, I, I shut the light off 11 o'clock at night in the, and I went home. So does that make me an expert? No, but it makes me know more about it than you may think. Years later, I spent years traveling in and out of the South Pacific. This book was a result of it, of the making of men, many books, there is no end. Now you're gonna see, people are so stupid, they'll crucify you for showing a book you wrote when they've written nothing. I don't understand people. I'm a prolific author, what do you want me to do? Hide it to make you feel better? Some of us do things, some of us produce things, some of us spend our lives creating things. Don't get mad at us if we do. So again, although this was putatively about plants, I met some very interesting people. i never forget her. Mrs. Whippy, healer, descendant of an English sea captain and Fijian mother, Overlout. Look at her hands. I never forgot the picture I took of her hands with my old Nikon F. That's a great picture. Great hands. Did I talk with her about two spirits? No. The nights I spent in the villages drinking Yangona with the men, did I talk about two spirits? No. All the nights over the Yangona bowl, drinking Piper Metistica. When I spoke with the king of Tonga, did I speak about two spirits? No. When I crossed the Windina River, looking for a certain plant. Did I ask about this? No. So why am I showing you the book? Because sometimes things are said without talking about them. Sometimes you pick things up in places. You pick it up spiritually. So I've given you the traditional Jewish view, and then there's a pre-Christian and Native American view of the two souls that I want to talk about in a moment. 
Native Americans, for example, had a concept of two-spirit people, which was called pre-Christian before the arrival of European settlers on what they call Turtle Island, which is North America. American Indians or indigenous people who identified as two spirits were seen as gifted and honored in their community because they carried two spirits within them, both male and female. Two S folks, that's what they were called, that's what they're called today by the, the LGBTQ community, 2S folks, or often the healers, medicine people, and visionaries within their given community. And they were members of their culture. They were not ostracized. They were not laughed at. They were not beaten up. They were not uh, tortured. They saw people with a double vision as gifted who could see both through their masculine and feminine lens, and they could see things that the other members of the tribe could not see and it wasn't all about their sexuality. That's the problem today, by the way. Today, the gay community has made their gayness all about being gay, not about what they're supposed to offer to the major, the community at large. That's their problem. They went off the track. They became sex obsessed. So in other words, that's the uh, pre-Christian or traditional view, if you want to put it to you that way. Pre-Christian, Native American, I had another one I wanted to read to you. Oh, here it is. This is incredible. This is the best one I found so far. People have two souls, Native American and pre-Christian beliefs revealed in a publication called ancientpages.com. I always give credit where credit is due. Written by Ellen Lloyd, Ancient Pages. She wrote, the concept of the soul is fascinating. Despite many attempts, no one can really tell you with certainty what the soul is and what happens to it when we die. It doesn't prevent us from having thoughts on the subject, does it? And modern people are just as curious about the subject as our ancestors were. So depending on your religious beliefs, your concept of the soul may vary. By the way, if you want to know when I'm about to go live, you have to subscribe. Then you'll get a notification thing that goes off on your iPhone. It pings. It says, Savage is about to go live. I do these intermittently. Sometimes I'll do them regularly every Sunday morning. Sometimes I don't. And sometimes during the week, I, I can't think at all. I don't want to, I don't even want to talk. I become speechless. And uh, yesterday I did a, a, a live YouTube on uh, why so many young people are committing suicide and electing euthanasia. People were shocked by it. They were heartbroken by it. It's a very important topic. It's because they've lost their faith. They never had faith. They were raised on medication, like who knows what. What the quacks, Adderall, Prozac, and their souls are stolen from them. Instead of telling them to struggle with their problems and to perhaps go to church or go to synagogue, go and pray to a higher power, they're told to take another pill and they wind up committing suicide, jumping off the top of the NYU library when the drugs wear off. So we're living in, in very uh, stressful, emotional times. I don't want to go into the politics. I do that all the time. Every day we wake up politically, we don't know how we can go on looking at what's going on. I woke up this morning without getting too political. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. UCLA has declared that the medical school is no good it's too, it's too, uh, uh, I have to use their exact words. You'll never believe it. UCLA medicine has denigrated medicine as white science. Are you listening to this? How many years did I tell you when you let unqualified morons into schools and they can't keep up, they'll declare the school itself racist. And then now they're declaring the curriculum racist. Now they're declaring science as racist. So as we devolve into tribalism or a primitive state of society god knows where this will end when we have such a creature from the black lagoon in the white house we don't know where this is going to end another president would stand up and say this has to stop put an end to it you could remain a democrat but you can't let this insanity go on so this is where we're going we're going into this i figured since we're going into tribalism or primitivism and I know something about it. I, I thought this topic would be of interest to you. Is it? Then click the like like button. 
subscribe. <laughs> if I had 4 million followers, let me tell you, can I ask you something? I, I cracked 50,000 on YouTube. If I cracked 5 million, what would happen to my life? Tell me what would happen. Would I walk around with a halo? What would I do? <laughs> would I feel any differently inside? I have enough of an audience of, see, I'm an acquired taste. Michael Savage is an acquired taste. Most of you have followed me over from radio. You've been with me for over 30 years. Some of you are new and don't know who the hell I am or what I'm talking about and say, yeah, I like him or I don't like him. But the point is, I'm an acquired taste. So I never expect to have 50 million followers or 5 million followers. If I wanted to show my tits in a bathtub, I'd have 5 million followers tomorrow if I were a woman, like Occasional Cortex, the communist faker who was born into a, a successful middle-class family in Westchester, a, a decent Hispanic family. She, she became a psychotic after listening to the bastard Bernie Sanders. The renegade, the worst Jew in American history is Bernie Sanders next to Charles Schumer. You rank the two of them together. They're right out of Marx 101, Lenin 102, Trotsky 103. So this idiot, who you call a Casio cortex, is occasional cortex because her brain works half the time. She grows up in a middle-class home in Westchester and makes believe she's down with the people. So as we descend into chaos and into primitivism, crime is surging. The full moon is coming tomorrow or something. Full moon, or, or, or the, sorry, the eclipse tomorrow. People are freaked out over that. I don't know what they're afraid of an eclipse for. What I'm supposed to do, shake under a blanket? I don't even care about the eclipse. It happens. It's like a tides happen. People are getting terrified. The world coming to an end. Michael, what's going to happen? Go in your bomb shelter with Zuckerberg. He has Zuckerberg if he accommodate you in his subway car in the bomb shelter. Probably has a bigger tunnel than Hamas does underneath the bomb shelter. For a line of price. a bomb shelter that runs from wherever he built it to, to the end of the year. I don't know. These people are unlimited in their Mishagas. The world is in turmoil because of the creature from the Black Lagoon in the White House. French troops are put on the Russian border today. Ireland is collapsing. It used to be the most Catholic country in Europe. It's been taken over by psychotics. Scotland elected a Muslim. He says there's too many white people in Scotland. We have four planetary conjunctions, a seismic warning. New York is hit by an earthquake yesterday. The world is in upheaval. It's earth in upheaval. Velikovsky, I read him when I was 18, changed my life. So I'm talking about do people have two souls? And I've given you one or two views. And I'm going to go back now to the two soul concept in ancient pages, and I'll finish. I'll try to summarize it. According to Professor Aki Hultkrantz, who lived between 1920 and 2006, who studied the ancient religious beliefs of Native Americans, he came up with his ideas. He said the concept of two souls was widespread throughout pre-Christian Europe, but later the church considered it a heretical concept. And I can read what he found. According to Oregon, O-R-I-G-E-N, Origen, one of the early Christian bishops, the revived souls of the dead following the last judgment would have an ethereal spherical body form, repeats the ancient Egypt Egyptian concept as carried forward by hermeticists, which was then condemned by the church fathers of the time as heresy, probably because it too closely matched the dreaded spiritual independence of Neoplatonic concepts with which the politically fixated church had already had to do battle. That's a very big sentence. I'm sure those who are calling the UCLA medical curriculum too white can't even follow the sentence. There's too many syllables and too many words. I've got a bongo drum for you. He says, much later on in the 12th century CE, we find a recrudescence of the common pre-Christian teaching found throughout the Middle East as to man having two souls, the Ba and the Ka of the Egyptians the Ba and the Ka of the Egyptians. 
This idea, he writes, was carried forward by the Bogomils in their teachings for in 110 CE, a synod at Constantinople, now called Istanbul, posthumously anathemized, anathematized the monk Constantine Chrysomilus for such a heretical concept. Why do Native Americans believe we have two souls? Now, I'm not saying all Native Americans believe that, but it was a common belief. This individual says that unlike pre-Christian Europeans, Native Americans never abandon their belief people carry two souls, except for the Pueblo people of the Southwest who are influenced by the Mexican high culture's concept of a unitary soul. Most Native American tribes still maintain the two, that, two, that two souls play an essential part in a person's material and spiritual life. So let's pause right there. Let's talk about me to you. Do you ever get conflicting thoughts about something? How do you make a decision about which is the right decision to make? Are those the two souls at work? I don't know. You have to figure it out. I'm not here to answer your questions. I'm here to ask the questions. And making you think will make you come to your own conclusions, which most adults came to a long time ago. Or they bury these feelings. They don't even know what they don't they don't care. Most people are so numb from drugs that they put on, especially the psychiatric community has so killed our souls with these drugs. Most people don't even think about s- subjects like this anymore. Or they bury themselves in sports, entertainment. We all do, you know. It's a good way to get out of it. But at the end of the day, when the lights go off at night, do you never wake up in the middle of the night and ask these questions? If not, I pity you. There's some ancient being within you asking to be heard. Maybe that ancient being has answers for you that you can't find in your modern being. It's scary. I know it's frightening. It's frightening to think like this. It's much easier to be a one-string guitar. So according to this, one of our souls stays free. It stays with us throughout our lifetime. And when we die, this soul leaves the body and undertakes a journey to the realm of the dead. Our second soul is the body soul or the life soul, which is sometimes referred to as the breath soul. This soul animates the body and facilitates movement and consciousness. Among several groups, the life soul is thought to reside in the chest, and many connect it with the heart. He writes that quite possibly the many rock drawings of animals and men found in the Southwest are the earliest representations of native soul beliefs because they show a lifeline running from the mouth to the heart. For many people, the heart was the seat of the soul and the breath coming through the mouth in the form of words expressed a person's soul. Amen to that. Some people have soul. You can hear it in the singers. Some people have a tinny voice, and yet they make a fortune by expressing the homilies of the right or the homilies of the left. Do I have to name names? Mickey Mouse on Laughing Gas? Words express a person's soul. At death, the life soul can wander for a time in the land of the living as a malevolent ghost. But eventually, the disincarnate life soul dissipates and merges with the wind, the clouds, and sometimes the great spirit, or it just disappears and is gone forever. So there are many beliefs on this subject. We're spiritual beings for sure. Do we have two souls? Is this a mystery or is this a fact of reality? We all know there's male and female feelings in all of us. In other words, If a man has female feelings, he can therefore relate to women. He doesn't have to become a woman. Let me say that again, because that's not being taught today in, in the universities of deceit. If a girl feels like she has a male feelings in her, she can relate to a man. So usually in the history of human beings, she would find a man who most closely expressed those feelings of masculinity within her and have a romance or get married with that man. She'd marry that soul. 
today because we're fractured as a society. That girl is told to become a, get a lesbian, put on pants and become a dyke and go and have sex with a woman. That's a half a person. She's not fulfilling her destiny as a full person. She had something there and she blew it. Instead of saying, I have a lot of man in me. I'm going to find the guy who represents what I feel. I'll hang out with him. I'll become one with him. She then tries to become him. So she's fractured. That's another way to look at it. You like that view? Because I didn't read it anywhere. I think I finished this sermon today. The rest will be, pro I gave you the whole thing. There's not, no, no more to say. I've given you the whole thing. I can conclude. I know many of you are here because you're, you're, you don't have much to do or you don't want to go right now. You're glad Uncle Mike is here. I could read you a nightmare I had on January 16th, 2017. That's, I found it in the journal, in the, in, the, in the stuff today. This was not yet given to the Bancroft Library with my writings, which I'm so, I'm actually proud of certain things in my life. That's one of the things I'm proud of, that all of my writings, my journals, my publications are permanently housed at the Bancroft Library, along with some great Western authors, and along with the largest Mark Twain collection in the world. This is forever. Should I read Shaquana? Yes or no? Or should I do it another time? I'm not feeling well today. I'm not feeling really well. I'm a little worried how I feel. I just don't feel good inside. Something's wrong. I feel a very deep heaviness in here. Shall I read the dream to you, Shaquana? I'm getting enough sleep. I sleep every night. Maybe I should save it. I don't know. I'm a little tired. I should go out probably and breathe the sea. It's almost a separate piece. It's, it's one, two, three, four. It's an add-on. I don't want to make this an add-on. It was a dream I had that's somewhat like the subject I'm reading. <clears throat> for whom the bell tolls, the bell tolls for thee. I like my clocks. I like my effigies. I like the art I have around me. All of them represent so much to the artist, whether they be of that world or of the Christian world or of the Jewish world. I love all religions. I think all religions have greatness in them, except one, which is about hate and death and means to convert and kill everyone. Uh, do I have to mention it by name? Every piece of art, if you look at it carefully, has both the male and female in it. Here's a piece I bought 50 years ago in a collection. I believe these were from Algiers. These are handmade, I think, of silver. They're beautiful, or Morocco or Algiers. I don't even know what it is. You look at it very carefully. You've got the symbolism here. That's both male and female. Artists all understand the twin soul. All artists understand that any artist that's worth anything, who isn't John Nagy, represents in his art or her art the two soul, two souls, the two soul concept. I can tell you so much more right now, but I, I don't know right now. I'm not feeling great. I, I think I'm going to stop. Don't worry about me. I just don't feel good. There's something wrong. I think I need to rest. I'll read you Shaquana another time, maybe another day. I'll follow it up. It's a nightmare I had on January 16th, 2017. Okay, folks, if you like what you see, subscribe, because then you'll get a notification the next time I go live. Mm -hmm. Hit the like button. That's what we do on YouTube. So I can sleep better at night when I have 200 more followers. 34 minutes is good. Any longer, it's too long. 
You know, I think about that. 34 minutes without ads. There are ads in YouTube, but you can skip past them, which is interesting. With radio, you can't skip past ads. And your brain gets rattled. You just hit skip. So 34 minutes of airtime was the equivalent of a full hour on radio. Today, it's probably 22 minutes. The rest is ads. It's the nature of the world today, what happened to it. The thing, the thing I like about YouTube and my podcast is I can go. I don't have to stop. Just go. Elaborate. Think. Breathe with you. Maybe I'll take a drink of water. We'll see. Frankly, I don't know what it is. It's a heavy time right now. I think that's what it really is. The news is getting to me, I'll be honest with you. I'm an immigrant son. I don't know how this country can survive this creature from the Black Lagoon. The mass hysteria, the brainwashing to believe this man is doing a good job. Any other country would have been thrown out and put in jail by now, or at least forced to retire or forced out just for being me mentally and physically, overtly mentally and physically ill. No other nation on earth would, would take this. He's dragged us into a world war with Russia. We're on the up the cusp of a world war. He ran out of Afghanistan and left all the weapons on the ground, which are picked up by the Islamists and put in the hands of the Islamists. How many of them brought the weapons over here to America? I don't know. This is a heavy time for people to see what's going on. Unless take me out to the ball game, take me out to the ground, buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. Go ahead, enjoy yourself. I don't blame you. Become a soccer mom. I don't blame you. You have to. The kids need someone to be there with them. I pity the children, mainly the white children, because they're being targeted in America today in every school. I drive past the college here. I look at it as a college, college of Marin. I said, what are they putting in the heads of these children? America, no good. Whites, bad. People of color, saints. Bring it all down, girl. Look at it. Look at the curriculum. How does a country survive this insanity, this mass hysteria? Does a country survive this? Yeah, I'm getting political now. Maybe that's just what I want to talk around, about. Maybe that's what I want to talk about. I don't know. Or maybe I should do that another time. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. The podcast I did on, uh, we posted on Friday, is, is really amazing. They're all good. It's on capitalism versus socialism from a brilliant professor in Berlin. You don't want to miss that one. He and I spoke by Zoom. I told you how much I, I love modern technology. Where, where is the title here? i got to find this. I had it. I don't know. It's so much stuff on Twitter now. I can't even find my own stuff. Palestinians rioting at the Rutgers University. They wear the headscarves and come in and say Jews should die. Jews should all be killed at Rutgers University. And there's no justice department and no police. What if a group, group of Ku Klux Klan members went into a black church and screamed, black should die, God forbid, and black should be sent back to Africa? What would happen? Where would Joe Biden be the next second? Capitalism versus socialism, episode number 705, with historian Dr. Renier Zeitelman. He was in Berlin, Z-I-T-E-L-M-A-N-N, -N. brilliant man. I tweeted, Biden is pro-Muslim, anti-Jewish thugs, call for a truce in Gaza, but not for a truce in Ukraine. Why? I read today that Israel paused its revenge against the Hamas Nazis who are hiding amongst their women and children, hiding in hospitals, hide, hiding in mosques which they always do, always have done it, wearing women's clothing. And Biden forced Israel to pause before wiping out the, the leadership. How's that going to work out? Meanwhile, the Palestinian Klux Klan, the PKK, rages across America. The Palestinian Klux Klan raging across America with their headscarves. Not one word from the Justice Department that's free speech. J6 wasn't free speech for those who went there to pray. Anyway, let's get back to the end here. That's a great podcast. Don't miss it. 
It's wherever podcasts are seen. So I've given you today, I'm going to save Shaquana for another time. I don't think I want to read it now. It, it, it's too much. Today, I did, do people have two souls? Pre-Christian, Native American, and Jewish beliefs revealed. See, my own notes. I didn't read it on the internet. One thing I got to thank God for, well, a lot of things. The main thing I thank God for is giving me my breath every day. Every morning, I thank God. But aside from that, he's given me the ability to preach and teach. And every time I doubt why I'm here, why I didn't go on, on in 09, and I, the woman, the black woman said, you still have work to do. Well, here I am doing that work. So yesterday when I did, why are so many healthy young people committing suicide and electing euthanasia? And I say loss of religion. Somebody up there liked that. Today, when I did do people have two souls, pre-Christian, Native American, traditional Jewish beliefs revealed somebody up there liked that. Why? Because he wants me. Remember, I'm the messenger. I'm not the message. I'm the messenger. That's my job, simply to be a messenger. And I talk to some of the smartest people on the planet who you never heard of. They don't bathe naked in a bathtub to go on YouTube. You never heard of them. Your dreams are very prophetic. One day I'll do a whole podcast on dreams. I remember I asked someone in a Fijian village at night. I said, Dominico, what, uh, what do you Fijian people believe about dreams? Because I had another nightmare one night in the, in the village, sleeping on the mat all night. And I, he, I woke up. He said, well, he, he was great. He said, we believe the opposite is going to happen. I mean, that, that's the way he washed away the fear. In a way, it's true. It's like a dream could be a negative, like a garbage. Your, your, your brain is dumping its garbage out through a dream. You could look at it that way, too. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. It means that your fears, right? It's like a waste product. A dream could be seen as a, a burp or passing gas. I mean, if you want to you talk about it that way. They don't have to be, you know, like walking around like a saint. You could say, all right, it's just a... I'm getting rid of the, the mental dreck in my head. That's what a dream is. <laughs> uh, did you like this today? I need to hear from you. You liked it. You know, there was a comedian in the 50s. I never forget it. I used to talk about him on the radio. His name was Buddy Hackett. He was a fun, was so funny. I saw him live. I was a little boy. I think it was at a hotel in Lake Show. I don't remember. Browns. I don't remember the hotel. He was live on stage, and I remember he, he would get up, and he did such a great act, but he would really, he'd sweat during, I mean, put out his whole thing, right? That's what you're supposed to do during a performance. You're supposed to give it your all, bow at the end, and go back and collapse afterwards behind the stage. That's a performer. In other words, you give the audience everything. You sing your heart out. You ever hear that one? Well, I've learned after my event not to sing my heart out. I, pres I reserve a lot of my energy. So... He would get up there, buddy, and he did his performance, and the crowd wasn't a clapping enough. It was an almost all-Jewish crowd in some hotel up there in the Borscht Belt. And he got mad at them. And I remember what he said to the audience. He says, what's the matter? You don't like Buddy? You don't like Buddy? You don't want to hear any more of Buddy? Well, Buddy's going to leave unless you give Buddy some cl And then they would start to clap and cheer, and Buddy would go on. That's how I feel sometimes. Of course, there's no audience here. I can see your comments, which I love. It's why I like YouTube, because I can read your comments as they come up. It's like you're, you're sitting there, you know, as the words are there. So if you've enjoyed today's show, I love when I read the comments afterwards, I get people saying, I'm listening to you from Ireland, or I'm listening to you from Scotland, or I'm listening to you from here, or there are other countries. What a powerful tool. The internet is so profoundly powerful and how it's wasted on the young who paint fake belly, belly buttons on their abdomens to get another few likes or bathe naked in a bathtub to tell you Joe Biden is the greatest individual in the history of the presidency. Okay, folks, this is it again. 
I wish I could stay with you all day, but I can't. I feel a little better having gone off that track. I went to a switch track. And my breathing is easier now. That was a very, very heavy piece of metaphysics I did with you today in Two Souls. I mean, it's two in a row, very heavy YouTube pieces. Young people suicide, young people euthanasia. Now the twin souls. It's, it's not easy stuff. It's not light. It's not YouTube light. It's YouTube heavy. And I'm glad that the acquired taste, the audience I have, is there. You know, there have been performers, very famous performers who had small audiences and their work is still remembered 50 years later or more. They were very, not very well known in their time. The thing about YouTube is that these things will stay forever, I, well, for however long it is. These are kind of uh, lifetime lectures. I see them in the long picture, not in the short picture. Oh, one day, I just have another thing I want to talk about now. See, like it's, I'm feeling like the radio where I want to take a break. You'll listen to an ad and I'll come back and start talking about something else altogether. All I wanted to talk about a book I'm reading. <laughs> it was it was so good. It was hard to believe. It was a, I'll tell you what it is. And I'm not going to go into it and why. So I, I watched a movie I thought I had seen years ago. It was done years ago. It was called The Remains of the Day. I was I got sucked into it slowly. I was bored, and it, be, it was slowly. I couldn't believe what I was watching. It was one of the most profoundly fine films I've ever seen. It won so many different prizes. Two great actors, Emma. I don't even Emma Emma Stone. I don't Emma Thompson against the guy who played uh, the villain in so many movies. I, his name I always forget. You probably know what I'm talking about. But it's about a butler in England in a, in, a, in a manor house. And his perspective of the the butler, the servant class in England in the mid, uh, like 1930s. Anthony Hopkins, thank you. Hopkins is a genius. He won the Academy Award for it. He should. That's when, you, when acting really mattered. You didn't have to just be of a certain race to win an award. That was called acting. Besides, we had, what the hell is this? Who could write something like this? So I looked up who wrote it. No, listen to this. It's worth me getting. Hold on. So I go look up who wrote it. I figured it had to be an Englishman who wrote it. Who wouldn't know about the wealthy class who lived in such big mansions and the, and the servant class better than an Englishman? It wasn't. It was a Japanese man who became an Ameri uh, English citizen named Kazuo Ishiguro, The Remains of the Day, for which he won the Booker Prize, the Nobel Prize. Would you ever think a Japanese could know the sensibilities of this world, my goodness, it's hard to believe. The guy is a genius. I never heard of him. Kazuo Ishiguro, The Remains of the Day. Great book. Just a great book. Profound book. Entertaining book. And um, he did so many things in this book, I only started reading it, that I've never seen done before. Which I actually could spend a whole podcast on this one day which is worth doing, this book and other books. The whole, ish, the whole concept of the, the, uh, uh, the Lord and the servant, the master and the servant. What is greatness? What is goodness? Wow, you, you read a book like this, written. When did, he, when did he publish this book? Anybody see the movie The Remains of the Day? It was done a while ago. Introduction by Salman Rushdie. This is a reprint from someone. It means they probably ripped it. I don't know who ripped it. what year it was done. Alfred Knopf. Oh, it's Every Man's Library. Great book. And I'm reading it. Portrait of Stevens, a man who has dedicated himself to his career as a perfect butler and of an insular English manor house world that no longer exists. Oh, it's incredible. An English manor house world that no longer exists you can't even get a good maid today you can get a duster you can't get a you can't get a server you can't get anyone who does anything right you're afraid to say one word to them 
Like, could you dust under the bed? You're afraid they'll call you a racist. I mean, you get someone to move the vacuum cleaner around. You know, it's like a gardener, mow and blow, but they're not gardeners. A real gardener I used to see in Hawaii, the Japanese gardeners were real gardeners. A real gardener you would see in England 50 years ago clipping a hedge where every leaf had to be clipped the right way. Each leaf was clipped one at a time, not with... So the, these worlds are gone. That's why I like to read these books. I like to see the, the past. And it brings us all back to today's topic, which, of course, folks, I do have to go. I do have to go. The planetary conjunctions, the seismic warning, the eclipse coming on Monday. I'll probably have to do an, a, a show tomorrow on the eclipse. You're going to hide under the bed? <laughs> Are people so freaked out over an eclipse? <laughs> Have we, are we that primitive? <laughs> are we that primitive? We're afraid of an eclipse. You want a little politics at the end? One last one. I, I, I saw Israel stopped their assault upon the Hamas terrorists hiding amongst women and children. Biden had his way. So I did this this morning. I said, if nuclear weapons were loaned to Iran by Biden, would Schumer hand deliver the codes? Would the left cheer this as balance and fairness? Would Nadler play the fiddle as Israel burned? Would Pelosi offer to wash the feet of the mullahs in the Lincoln Memorial? Thank you for listening. Hit the like button. Subscribe so the next time I get it in my mind to do one of these things, you'll be right at the beginning. Thank you very much, and God bless America. Or may God bless America. May God bless America. Or pray that God blesses America. And pray that God saves us from this creature from the Black Lagoon sitting in the Oval Office.